Hello, everybody. This is Benny Hill, back with another Pioneer video. Uh, one brief thing I want to note before we start. Two things, actually. So, a couple people have been commenting lately that the audio is bad. I have a mic. Like, I just got this mic a couple weeks ago, and initially, after I got the mic, people said it was good. And so, I don't know if this mic is just bad, or if I broke it, or, or what. So, definitely, I mean, let me know on the audio, like, I'm talking right into it, if it still sounds bad. Um, hopefully it's not just, I have a bad voice, but, um, uh, I can get a better mic if necessary. I definitely will if that is what it comes down to, but a while ago it seemed good, so I'm just a little confused by that. Secondly, um, I posted a poll today on my channel, and first of all, I was excited by how many responses I got. It has over 200 responses right now. I thought I would have to, like, publicize it in a video or something, but I guess it got, it got some reach, which is nice, and, um, it was asking about whether or not I should do spiky videos or spicy brews, and it was overwhelmingly spiky videos. I was actually sort of surprised just by how strong it was. It was like under 10% said I should do com like brews all the time, like 20% said I should do a mix, and then like 70% said to just do competitive videos where it's like high level analysis, trophy stuff. And I guess that makes sense. One person commented that like, that's sort of my competitive advantage. Uh, there's a lot of people that just make videos, but n most of them have not been trophy leader multiple times. So um, I'll definitely try and do a High level video going forward. So this is a brew, but I still it's plain to win. I, I think this tech is quite good. Uh, it's Boro Super Friends. So um, in general, these sort of Super Friends decks play a lot of blue for card draw, but I think this these colors have really good removal. Chain of the Rocks is an amazing, amazing removal spell, and Oath of Chandra is a pretty sweet sort of win condition slash removal spell. Um, and then there's just a lot of great Planeswalkers in red white. So we got some Gideons. We have Elspeth Sun's Nemesis and Elspeth Sun's Champion. Um, Gideon Alexander Car, some more board sweepers, and then Chandra and Nahiri. And Nahiri for the ultimate, we're playing Yadara, which I think is pretty sweet. Um, it's a card that you can, it like, it fits the mold. You can minus eight just to hit them for eight or kill a planeswalker, and then you get this back into your hand. And then you can cycle it or just cast it if it's late enough in the game. So it's like a good target to get with that. And if you draw it naturally, it's not dead because you can just pay two, cycle it, shuffle it back in, and then still find it with the Nahiri ultimate. So I can imagine potentially even playing more Yadaros, but I think there's a great way to play a card that works well with the minus eight Nahiri ability without just being a dead draw. So I'm excited to see how that plays. I think it could be good. And I also think that like with random damage from like Chandra pluses or Oath of Chandra, um, their life total could just incidentally get sort of low, which would make an 8 damage hit better than if they were just going to be at 20. Um, we got some Sarkon to turn all of our Planeswalkers into 4-4s. Four That's a solid win condition. Um, and then some Mouse of Conquer's Death to bring them all back, and then a couple 6-drops. So, uh, I think Maze... I, one problem I was worried about was a lack of card draw in this deck. So I'm playing Maze Mind Tome as a source of card draw. And then Chandra and Nahiri are both sort of card draw as well. And then... Finally, um, I'm playing three Arch Orkaza, or Orazka, which I think is pretty exciting. I'm, I'm excited to see how this plays, because this deck is sort of built with this card in mind, which is why we're playing two Elspeth Sun's Nemesis. If you play this on turn four, make two 1-1s. One Next turn, you need to make two more 1-1s, one and you play fifth land. Elspeth is five permanents right there. And so, just on turn five, you have the City's Blessing right there. And uh, Elspeth Sun's Nemesis also makes it quite easy to get to ten permanents very quickly. So, I'll be excited to see if this is actually a good card or not. Um... Like, I, I'm worried that this deck will just run out of gas or run out of card draw late in the game, and if I can consistently get the City's Blessing, this is a good way to keep that going in the late game. I'm playing 26 lands because we do want to get up to 6 mana, and there's no card draw. Um, playing 1 cycle land just as a another mountain. We want to have enough mountains for Chains of the Rocks, and then the Arches, and then 4 Interplanar Beacon, which we'll see. This could lead to some dicey mana situations, but it could also just gain a ton of life, so... Hopefully that works out. And then a couple tap lands with some temples and mule spires. And a sideboard. Um, again, this, this is my, I've never played a league with this deck. So a couple, I'm sort of just trying to figure it out. But first of all, I wanted to have a lot more cheap removal. Um, I'm actually playing a little bit low on the removal side in the main deck. I mean, we have a decent amount. But um, I have two Shadow of the Sky to go up to three and a Deathwing Clarion in the board. So we can have lots of board sweepers there. Elspeth Conquer's Death for the matchups where that's just one of your best cards. Some Graveyard Hate and Rest in Peace. Um, which does weaken our Elspeth Sun's Nemesis and Elspeth Conquer's Death, but um, those are both fine on their own, and I mean, yeah, in matchups where Rest in Peace is good, it's quite good. Um, for Goblin Rabble Master, because there's no creatures other than Yudara in the main deck, so opponents will likely cut a lot of removal, and this is just a great way to pressure Planeswalkers against opponents that are not ready for it. Some Fries, um, just to deal with Teferis mostly, and then a couple nice cast threats, or like, or 
things that are good against counter spells. Chandra cannot be countered, so it's very hard for Sun Control decks to beat. And then Emrakul can just win some games. And it's also a nice um, Nahiri target. I thought about playing uh, Emrakul in the main deck, but then I figured we don't really have ways to fill our graveyard. Like, we'll definitely have a Planeswalker in the graveyard and, like, maybe an enchantment. But, like, creatures will never be in the graveyard. Lands will... I guess we have Pavel Passage. But it's just going to be dead in our hand a lot. So, um, but then in some matchups where it will go very long, that's less of a concern. So, I'm excited to see how this plays out. Again, I've never played it before, but I think it has a lot of potential. So, yeah, we'll hop on in. We have our opponent, so we'll hop on in. One thing I'll note is that my win streak with Blue Eye Control finally came to an end. So, I won my first 14 matches in a row, going on three consecutive trophies, and then lost to Japanese Fisherman, who's third in the trophy leaderboard. He was playing, uh a Niv-Mizzet deck, and it was a really, really close match. I lost 2-1, to one, and one of the games that I lost, they had cut to ribbons. I was at a high life total, and they only had, like, four cards left in the library, and their only win condition was Uro. So they were going to draw the, all their cards before they uh, they killed us, but then they had to cut to ribbons for 15 to, to kill us. And then in the last game, they were probably ahead, but they only had, like, 30 seconds left. It was a very long game, um, but unfortunately they didn't take me down, so I'm now 14-1 and one with the deck. I will also note, I made some changes. I cut the Frantics and added Dig Through Time. So I am undefeated when I'm not playing Dig Through Time. And 4 and 1 when I am, so that's something. This hand is quite slow. But I think I'm going to keep it. Um, we have a lot of 4 mana play, so we're very likely to have something on 4. And, like, there's some matchups where this will be quite bad. But in the dark, I don't really like mulliganing aggressively in a reactive deck. Because, like... If we're worried about aggro and we just, like, mulligan to Sweltering Suns and then play against the control deck, that's super bad. Uh, we also have, like, I mean, good mana, like, Interplanar Beacon to gain some life. So, I could imagine shipping this, but I think the Maze Mind Tome will help us to find some action. And so, we'll keep it, even though it is a bit land heavy and Elspeth Conqueror's Death is not really the card you want in your opener. And we'll cry if they play turn one Mountain Swiss Gear. All right, our opponent disconnected for a bit, but they're back now. They play Forbidden Rune and then Thought Seizers. Okay, well, I mean, we don't have any spells that can take our Tome, but in general, against the Thought Seize deck, having a million Planeswalkers is pretty good, so hopefully we can draw in some gas. Well, <laughs> that's sort of gas. We'll lead on Needle Spires and pass. So obviously our hand is quite slow, so hopefully this is a deck that's going to, like, Play a bunch of thought seasons and removal spells and not thought seasons and rebel masters. Waste not. Wow, okay, that's spicy. Actually, that's quite good against us. We, well, it's good against Nahiri at least. Chain to the Rocks, that's maybe gonna be good. We'll play Sacred Foundry and pass. Um, but yeah, if we plus Nahiri, we will discard and fuel this. So, I mean, if we discard lands, that will probably be fine, but something to be aware of. Also, Nahiri can always just minus exile this, but something to be aware of. If they thought to this again, they will get to draw a card. Won't be Rabble Master. Collective Defiance. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's sweet. So we discard our hand, they get six mana and draw three cards. Well, hopefully we draw a good hand. <laughs> That's a really good combo, actually. Um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> we're sort of getting rocked, but we drew a decent hand, so that's good. Hopefully they play some things that we can sweltering suns. Alright, another waste knot. Jeez, they are absolutely going off right now. Well, we drew another decent hand, but, like, they're just doing things that are so much more, like, this is their absolute nut draw, I would imagine. These cards are all sort of bad, but if they have Waste Knot, then they become amazing. They have 9 cards and 13 mana, they get to draw another card. Well, <laughs> we're not doing anything here, we're sitting back and watching, letting them do their thing. Do we have a sideboard for this matchup? Not really? Yeah, not really at all. I'll say I was not building this deck with the, the Waste Knot deck in mind. Yeah, I really have no idea what we can sideboard. Maybe Rest in Peace is good. Oh, we're just doing very fair things, and their deck is doing very unfair things. Well, 
Wow, so turn three, they made us discard a bunch of cards, drew infinite cards, and then put 14 power onto the board. Yeah, we're just dead. Well, that was sort of rough. I sort of feel like if they don't draw at Waste Knot, they're just going to do nothing. But, I mean, yeah, we, we got absolutely rocked there. I don't think that's indicative of this deck being bad at all. I just think that's, like, a bizarrely, like, top 1% draw for them. But, I mean, who knows? Maybe that's just what they always do. Um... Do we make any changes? Rest in Peace seems... I mean, it's good against uh, Gurmag Angler. I think that's... Well, yeah. I think that's worth bringing in. It also just is something we can get down before they start going off. Um, does this go to the graveyard ever? Shuffle it into your library from your graveyard. So Yudara does get shut down by Rest in Peace. I think we're just going to cut Yudara then, or... I mean, it's still just fine. You can just cantrip it, and it is nice to have access to something to get with this. I kind of feel like Sweltering Suns is not going to be great. They just look like they're going a bit bigger. So I'm going to bring in Rabble Masters, I think. Man, I really have no idea what to do here. Uh, I guess, well, Shadow of the Sky seems okay, maybe. But the Chandra doesn't seem like it's going to hit very much. I think Nahiri... Yeah, I think I'm going to cut Yudaro. And one... Elspeth Sun... I really have no idea what I'm doing here. I, I just got... I'm still in shell shock from just getting absolutely dominated like that in game one. Um, I guess we'll play these... They're bad with rest in peace, but they'll, if they just make us discard our hands, then they'll be good. All right, whatever. I'm not confident this is right, but I really think that it doesn't really matter what we do. I feel like their deck will either be absolutely unbeatable or just lose to itself and do nothing. So, unfortunately, our choices aren't too relevant. Well, I mean, I guess this hand is good. But like, we can't do anything against the draw they just had. So, But I think we're just going to be conceding to that and hoping they're a bit slower. I mean... Tome into Rabble Master. We can, like, play to the board at least. So if they make us discard our hand, we can have some stuff in play. Again, like, their cards don't do anything. other Like, other than Waste Knot, none of the cards they played there really were good at all. They just, like, we're all card disadvantaged that just, like, cycle our whole hand. So, I mean, I guess they just are going to mulligan to Waste Knot pretty much. Maybe there's other cards that do similar things. Do they have the Thoughtseize? They do not. So we'll grab planes. All right, second rabble master is actually pretty nice, I think. Tome, and we are just gonna scry at the end of their turn, I think. Well, they have the waste knot, so we're looking for lands and Nahiri, especially Nahiri. Rest in peace. I think that is good enough. I think, uh, like, uh, if we could just go Rabble Master and Rabble Master and the rest in peace, that seems quite good. So we'll play this. Start beating in. I guess if they make us discard a card and we discard our Rabble Master, it is annoying that they get a 2 2. But we can maybe chain to the rocks it, although, I mean, who knows? They might just make us discard a whole end. Okay, they do. So they get a 2 2 and draw 3 cards. But they don't get any mana. Oh, wait, we definitely want to scry here. So we can uh, play. We can either take out the Waste Knot, but I kind of think I want to... Oh, wait, yeah, yeah, we... I forgot this This is not the other Chandra. So ideally, we find a way to deal with the zombie. Archibald Kaza, I think we're going to bottom that. Rest in Peace is a good one. But we're going to fetch a second Mountain, I think. I think that's a bit more... Oh, I mean, we do have a decent number of double white cards, but... Chandra, and we have a Chandra in hand and a bunch of Chandras in our deck. And we'll play this. Exile, Waste Knot. And I'm just going to attack with everything. Because if they block the Rebel Master, then they can't kill our Nahiri. I should have done this pre-combat, for sure. Okay. This is fine. Hitting them for 5 is... And then if they spend their turn attacking Nahiri, Rebel Master will pressure them a lot. And I guess we will keep on scrying. I mean, 
the thing is, there's not like one card that's like what are we trying to draw with our with our tomb? I almost feel like we'd rather just draw a card and then put play rest in peace next turn. Cathartic reunion. They're making themselves discard a card or their hand and draw a new hand. So they draw five, discard. All right, so we'll. Yeah, we're just going to, I mean, here he dies, we're definitely way behind. Like, this matchup seems honestly sort of unwinnable, but we'll, uh, we'll keep on fighting. So, hoping to draw a land here. Nice. So, we'll get our rest in peace down, and then next turn we can play Sarkon and make a dragon. And then, or, or just, like, hit them, like, play Elspeth, or Chandra, and that should put in some pretty good work, I think. I mean... We turned off all their Gurmag Anglers, so they could still play Hollow One stuff, but we'll see. Duress, okay, so they're taking one of these. If they take our Sarkon, I think we will scry in our upkeep because we would really like to hit a land for Chandra. Although, I guess if we didn't hit a land, we could cast any spell. And if it was like a, a bad spell, we could just draw a card too, so maybe we actually won't. But we'll see. Um... In terms of the city's blessing, we have five, six, seven, eight permanents. So if we do draw land, if yeah, if we draw a land, or even if we don't, we can actually get there this turn. Flame blade adept, okay. I mean, props for creativity. I don't think their deck is good, but it is interesting. Okay, so they make us discard our last card. They draw one. So now we're definitely not scrying. We, we're just going to draw a card since we're very low on resources. They have one card. Well, it's a bit annoying that this is going to get exiled because it'll mean we can't get the city's blessing. But we have, I guess, just more efficient sources of card draw right now. Um, okay. Scry. Bottom. Hit tomb. And now we don't have any blockers here, but they don't have too much going on. And we do have this tome to start... Continue drawing extra cards, so um, that's good, I guess. We'll just take the three here. And they could just have more stuff that doesn't do anything, like more dark deals or whatever. Okay, another flame blade is a bit annoying. We a board sweeper would be nice here. So I am gonna scry here, um, just because time is a bit of the essence. Ooh, uh, I think I actually am gonna keep this. We have a lot of tomes here, but we have mana to make use of them. So I'm gonna start by drawing a card. Okay, um, we will play Temple of Triumph, Scry 1, don't want that, play another Tomb, and we'll just pass and draw a card at the end of their turn. I believe we have three, we don't have our Sweltering Suns, and now that we know a bit more of their deck, we might want that, but we do have three of the Shadow of the Skies, and I don't think we've gone through any, so Decent Hits will hit one soon. I'm still just going to take four, our life feels high enough that I don't think I want to jump block yet. Okay, no play. So we will draw a card. These tomes have been pretty good. Another arch. Hmm, that's something. So I'll draw a card. Chain of the rocks. Um. Let's see. We could chain of the rocks something. Yeah, I think I will just hold off on using the tome for a bit. We'll play another arch. Play Elspeth, make some 1-1s. One and then the question is if we want to chain one of their dudes. I think we're just going to chain um, one of their uh, their adepts. They're, they're just like, the upside is much higher on these. I'm okay with trading some 1-1s one for this. And then we'll pass and probably just end up scrying with a tomb here. Do we attack? Uh, I think I'm going to leave it back and just try and protect the Elspeth. Obviously, it's a bit awkward that Elspeth will not be able, like, the rest in peace hurts our Elspeth, but I think they're, it's pretty likely they have, like, a Gurmag Angler or something in hand. Oh, they just concede. All right, well, very, these two games have been very different. Hopefully, it's nice that we were able to take out their Waste Knot. So, do we want to change anything? Do we want these Sweltering Suns? Maybe, but what do we not want? Hmm. We also could bring in another rest in peace. 
this Chandra seems a bit expensive. Maybe we want just another Sweltering Suns. Maybe Rebel Master is actually bad. Um, yeah, Rebel Master seems sort of bad, actually. So instead, we can just play. Hmm. I guess we do play the Chandra still. And we can bring in a couple Sweltering Suns. Another Rest in Peace and Elspeth Conquers Death. Or maybe just another Sweltering Suns. I mean, I'd, it would be annoying to just bring a bunch of suns and then lose to a hollow one. Hmm. Yeah, I think this is how we're going to run it. Yeah, we'll, we'll do this. We have four chains of rocks for hollow one and Gurmag. And I do think Rest in Peace looks pretty good, despite its anti-synergy here. Okay. Ooh, well, awkward that we don't have double white, but we're still going to keep it. I think turn two Rest in Peace is nice, and then if they do end up making us discard our hand, to punch, pip, like pitching an Elspeth and a bunch of cards is pretty good. We do need to find more white mana. Thoughtseize. Okay, so they're probably going to take our rest in peace. Hopefully we can find a white source for Gideon on three. Yep, they do take the rest in peace. Arch, sure. Okay, no waste not there is huge. That is really, really good. Okay, that's a great draw. So we'll play that, and then we'll definitely scry here because we would love to find a play next turn, either a white source for the Gideon or another play. Like, I mean, I guess the Sweltering Suns is really our only other play, or, or another Tome. I've liked Tome a lot so far, actually. It's really impressed me. And, like, the one the great flaw I was worried about with this deck was lack of card draw, but it's possible that this really... Gets rid of that problem. Are they just going to play Dark Deal or whatever? So they're just making us draw a new hand. Sure. That's a bad play, actually. That just helps us, honestly. Although, we didn't have a land, so there's something. Hopefully, we can scry into one. Alright, bottom. And then upkeep. Uh... Actually, we don't need to worry about upkeep scrying. We're just going to draw a card if we don't hit land. Or um, we'll probably draw a card either way. Okay, really, really good to have hit the land there. Now we are going to scry in our upkeep because we have a meaningful play. Like, we wouldn't have had anything to cast there, really. Okay, Chandra. So we have an Elspeth Conqueror's Death for that. Um, so we'll scry in our upkeep, but we'll hopefully be able to hit our own Chandra. Nice. And then next turn we can plus Chandra for mana and do whatever we want. Oh, there's an Urborg. I hate it when opponents have Urborg and they make my basics be harder to tap. We'll shoot them for two. And they'll find a beacon on top. And now I don't think we need to worry about scrying in our upkeep. Like, we can cast a great play next turn either way. Although, I guess... We won't be using this to draw a card for a while, probably, unless they make us discard our hands and we draw a bunch of lands. So it's sort of close. It depends on what they do. Also annoying that this is just staying here and that I can't move it. Oh. Well, maybe it's not a problem for y'all. If it's under my face, I'm just going to hide it there. Dark deal. So they took out our hand. Uh, at least we have a Chandra down, but it is annoying. Like, our hand is really good. So we draw four cards. All right, still drew some great stuff. So I'm not going to use this tome. We're just going to play Sark on the Masterless and make a 4-4. And the next turn we can hit for 12. Gurmag Angler? Ooh, that would be a bit annoying. Okay, they do have an Angler. So against that, we might want to just play Elspeth, actually. We could also just kill the Gurmag, but... Oh, we actually really need to prioritize killing this Chandra, because if it ultimates, that will be quite bad for us. So... Hmm. I mean, we could just play Sarkon and make a dragon, but then they can mine a Chandra to kill it. They only have one card. I 
think I like just playing Elspeth and making two one ones. Um, next turn we oh wait we could also play Sh uh, Sarkon and plus and then make Chandra into a four four that kills their Chandra. But I think I'd rather just play Elspeth and so we'll just play it from the graveyard. So add two mana. Tap six. Pass this. And then the only use of our graveyard cards is Elspeth Conqueror's Death. Holy moly, we have a lot of Planeswalkers in our graveyard. Um, so we'll do this. Make some 1-1 one -one so we can chump block the Gurmag and keep our Chandra alive. And then I guess just pass. And next turn, we can play Sarkon, plus it, and then hit their Chandra for 8 with our two Planeswalkers. So what we just really don't want is another thing that makes us discard a whole hand. Although, even if they do do that, we can keep on just making Elspeths from our graveyard, and that'll pressure the Chandra enough, I think. Okay, Duress. Oh, that is bad. So they can take out our Sarkon. So I would be shocked if they took anything other than that. They took Nahiri. Wow, okay. Oh no, they're gonna Dark Deal. Come on! This is so annoying. I hate this deck. Okay, yeah, that just sucks. So, we'll see if they attack. We want them to. Okay, that's good. We're definitely letting that just die. And then we can hit their Chandra back for six. Okay, yeah, that's best case scenario. Also, I definitely should have um, cracked this and before they did that to just thin out a land from our deck. Not going to scry here. Okay, that's a bad draw. So, we're going to shock and just cast this. Mm, let's see. Yeah, we, we can make mana and use this to draw a card, I guess. Or just plus it to see a card, but we almost definitely want to play Elspeth, I think. Hmm, this is close, actually. We also can just ultimate our own Chandra. Okay, I think what we're going to do is plus this for mana. Actually, no, we'll just draw, we're going to start by drawing a card. Okay. Now we're going to shock, add mana, cast Elspeth from our graveyard. Yeah, they, uh, they've really helped us out a lot with these Elspeths. I mean, they've done... They've gotten rid of a lot of our good cards as well, but net, they've just fueled our Elspeth so much. Holy moly. I mean, it doesn't really matter. Um, so we'll cast Elspeth from our graveyard. And I actually am just going to make two more 1-1s. One -one. I don't really care. I just, We just want to ultimate our Chandra, and that'll just easily win the game. So we're just going to make some 1-1s. One -ones and then attack their Chandra with 1, I think. Because this leaves back three blockers, which almost guarantees they'll be able to... Like, well, if we attack with both and they draw a removal spell, they can minus Chandra on one and then play the removal spell on the other and hit our Chandra down to two, and then we're in pretty bad shape. So as long as we can ultimate our Chandra next turn, we will just win. I mean, we can just play these two Sweltering Suns and kill everything, and that'll be fine. So, yeah, we're just going to do that. Make sure they can ultimate. This is a very risk-averse line. We could almost definitely hit for two, but I don't think that'll matter. Either way, uh, we'll have to use two Chandra emblem things to, to kill it. Okay, so they plus, big hit here. Just, they just hit a land, so I think we should be good to go. I mean, they can definitely play Dark Depths or whatever. Waste Knot, yeah. <laughs> that's the problem with Waste Knot. We will not be cycling our Sweltering Suns, that's for sure. So now, yeah, they attack. We just chump. And now we can win. So, draw, <laughs> ultimate, um, I guess I'll just cast Elspeth Conqueror's Death, shoot this for five, alright, sweet. So, we managed to take down the Waste Knot deck, uh, props to the opponent for creativity, but not props for making an actual good deck, but definitely game one was, it took us for a ride, um, yeah, that was that was quite a game one. <laughs>
All right, we have our opponent for round two. Hopefully we can keep this winning streak going. And hopefully we can play a slightly higher tier deck so we can actually test if this deck is good. Ooh, I don't know how to pronounce this guy's name, but I definitely know they're good. Well, hmm, this is a hand. I think we should ship this. We have two six drops. Did our opponent keep? Did they mulligan? Yeah, I think we're going to mulligan. We have no interaction in the first two turns and two six drops, which are not what you want in the opener. Okay, I think this hand is better. We will keep and put back one of the Chain of the Rocks. There will be some matchups where we'll regret that, but I guess we could pick back a Gideon since we don't have the mana to cast it right now, but I think I'm going to put back a Chain. There's some matchups where they're quite dead, and if we mulligan and then keep two Chain of the Rocks against a deck that Chain of the Rocks isn't good against, that's super bad. So they are on mold 5. Okay, Temple Garden makes me sort of wish I had the second Chain of the Rocks. Yep, definitely. We're just going to Chain of the Rocks this, but be sad that we don't have a second one. So get rid of that guy. Pass it back. Rootbound Crag. So they're likely playing Winota. Needle Spires. Make sure we can get a Gideon down, which will be solid pressure. But they don't play a rabble or a war boss or something. Okay, Garrett's Harbinger is great. Yeah, we can shut that down very well. It's cool that this says that it like also counts dealing damage to planeswalkers. They've really been building in a lot of planeswalkery things recently. Like a lot of things that can, you know, removal spells that hit creatures or planeswalkers. That used to be like a once in a set thing, now it's a very common thing. So we have five permanents for um for our arch. That's sort of nice. Okay, do we want to Oath this or play Nahiri? Or Oath this. I kind of want to get this out of the way and just really stunt their mana development. So, I'm just going to play that. Even though... Uh, hmm. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for their mana. So, we'll play... Doesn't. I guess we'll take land out of our deck. Fetch a mountain, play an oath. Shoot this. Bus here, and pass it back. So now, I mean, they can still play Winota and get a trigger, but they would need to have untapped land and Winota, which is less likely than them just having it. Also, that, like, now it's awkward if they have Eldritch Evolution. They can sack this, but they wouldn't have any attackers this turn. Ooh, they just passed. That's definitely good for us. Tome, interesting. We're still going to play Nahiri this turn. So I'm going to go Plains. Actually, no, we'll start with Nahiri. Don't have to worry about Mana Tide or anything like that. Plus, discard a Mountain. Okay, that's maybe going to be good. I am going to play Land. Uh, we have multiple 5 and 6 drops, so I could imagine us wanting to discard it, but, like... I still think it's just good to get lands in play, especially when we have an arch. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we'll get to the city's blessing next turn. All right, I'm gonna play a tomb and draw a card. Well, actually, hmm. yeah, I'm gonna play a tomb and draw a card to start. If we draw a land, we could maybe oath of challenge or something. Okay, that's a solid draw. Um. Hmm. I actually am just going to discard an Oath of Chandra. I think Sweltering Suns will just be better. And then we'll plus here and pass it back. And our opponent can play. If they draw Winota, they can get two triggers, which is a bit scary. But I still think we're in a reasonable position. They're under a lot of pressure to attack the Nihiri. Like, a Yudaro isn't that devastating, but they don't know that that's all we have. So I'd imagine they're going to attack Nihiri with this. And then next turn we can Shadow the Sky to kill this. Or we can also... Okay, they get Pinter and Alar. That's not the best. They So they hit Nahiri down to two. Do we just want to Shadow the Sky here? Probably. Hmm. 
Yeah, and then I think I'm actually just going to, like, my hand is all good. I don't really want to discard any of these, so I'm going to exile this so that they don't get a token. So we'll do that. That. They do get to draw a card, which is a bit annoying, but, oh. Wait, am I an idiot? Yep, super, super, super. That's my first time ever casting a spell. We could have just drawn a card if we had animated this first. I don't think I think we're gonna win this game either way, but that clearly would have been better. Um, so we should just have an extra card in hand. But I think I mean next turn we can play Sarkon and hit them for eight in the air. Um, yeah, this should be good. We can also potentially uh, I'm gonna scry here. We we actually want to find the land so we can yeah we'll bottom that even though it's good in the matchup. Draw. Okay, we're just gonna play. Uh, we'll plus. We're gonna yeah, we're gonna plus and discard this oath of Chandra. Okay, I think I'm actually just gonna play Chandra and minus on this and hit them for four, and then set up for having lethal next turn. Stunting their mana at every stage. I'd rather, like, hitting them down for a decent amount of damage doesn't accomplish too much, whereas, like, just stunting their mana and setting up so that we almost guaranteed kill them next turn seems nice. So we'll shoot this for one. It gets exiled, not that that's relevant here, but that can matter. And then hit them for four. Pass it back in. Now, next turn we can hit them for 12 in the air with Sarkon. Oh, they also take two from the Chandra. Alright, sweet. So... I mean, they mulled a five, so that's not the best example, but it felt good there overall. So, creature decks. Fry hits Winota. It doesn't hit much other than that, but Winota is just so important, and they like their whole deck is based around getting that card, that I think it is worth it. Shadow of the Sky seems good. Deafening Clarion seems good. What do we not want? Mm -hmm. Honestly, a lot of our cards seem good. Right, I'll cut down one of these... Sarkon is probably a bit weak, honestly. Gideon making two twos also just aren't that powerful. Us with Conqueror's Death is okay. We could bring in more, but I don't think we want to do that. Um, hmm. Gideon of the Trials is quite good against that Garrett card, and just pretty good against their deck in general, I think. We could maybe cut one arch on the draw. We're not gonna. Yeah, I think that seems fine. So we'll do that, and then, is this how we want to run it? Yeah. Worth noting, so far, Arch has never been necessary. We have had the City's Blessing a lot, but, uh, first of all, small sample size. Second of all, we've drawn a lot of Maze Mind Tomes, so I could imagine in a game where we don't draw Tome, like, and we also just drawn a lot of Planeswalkers. I could imagine a game where we draw, like, a bunch of lands and cheap removal spells, and then it is quite good. Okay, no Board Sweeper here, but I think I'm going to keep it. We have... Solid mana. We have a two mana removal spell. Um, yeah, I mean, I would love to have one of our eight board sweepers, but Maze Mind Tome can help us find that too. No one drop is great for us. Okay, I'll take the land. That's good. We pass back. We're ready with an oath if we need it, although most two drops they could play oath is not good against. Yeah, Goblin Instigator, not good against that. So we're looking for a Sweltering Suns now. We'll play a Tome. They could just go Eldritch Evolution, sack this, and get one and play this turn. Uh-oh. Looks like that is what's happening. Alright, well, this could get pretty hairy pretty quickly. Hopefully they whiff. They did not whiff. Well, we're still in pretty good shape if we can find a Sweltering Suns, because then they won't get a Winnow to trigger this turn. Chain of the Rocks. That will also keep. Even though I do want lands, but that does deal with Winnow. So play a land. Enchant our mountain. Get rid of the Winnow. And I am also, I think, just going to... Actually, no, we're just going to pass and draw a card. I mean, we could shoot something with Oath of Chandra, but that doesn't really accomplish that much. Um, and we want to draw both lands and Sweltering Suns, so I'm just going to pass. If we, if they have land Winota, we're almost definitely going to lose. I guess killing the Pia does take them off of Eldritch Evolution for Winota again. 
Hmm. That's quite close, actually. I think I'm just going to let them have that, though. We're not in a position where we can play around them having a lot. And, like, we really... We have four four drops in our hand. We really need to draw a land. Okay, they didn't have Eldritch Evolution, so that's good. They can hit us for a decent amount of damage, but our plan is to sweep the board this next turn. Chandra. Wow, okay. Didn't realize they were playing that card. Well, that'll pressure us a lot, but step one is to find a board sweeper. <laughs> All right. Get under my face. Card that can't be cast. Alright, so we'll draw a card. Be a sweeper. Ooh, okay, that's bad. Scry. That's bad too. Draw. Well, I mean, we could shock ourselves down to eight and play a planeswalker and then kill their Pia. And then we take, go down to five with the attack and then three with our Chandra. How do we win from that position? We probably can't. Hmm. But I think that is our only out. So, which one of these do we want to play most? Probably Nahiri, because it eats the most damage if they are trying to kill it. We also can always just, um, gain five life with Elspeth if we're worried about our life total. But we do need to find a way to deal with this Chandra before it ultimates, for sure. To be fair, we, they had a good draw. We were on the draw. And they had turn three Winota for Pia. Okay, so we'll see if they hit us down to three or if they kill Nahiri and hit us down to five. Well, that's bad. I mean, yeah, I guess we just need to hope to draw. Well, we'll see. First of all, okay, they are killing that. So we need to find a board sweeper or we're dead to the board. So we will be. Oh, wait, we do gain four life. That's something. But we're going to scry in our upkeep. for a board sweeper or i guess like okay like i i think we have to take this but then how do we ever beat the chandra can we i don't really think so hmm so how do what answers in our deck do we have for chandra we can find elspeth conquer's death or uh, Big Chandra? Do we still have Big Chandra? We have one. We can play Chandra and plus it. Play Oath of Chandra. This doesn't deal damage to Planeswalkers, right? Yeah, just each opponent. Um, and then Chandra will survive even if they attack her. I think... I'm actually gonna bottom this, which might look weird, but we need to... Like, the Chandra will kill us. Okay, so that's maybe good. We can play... Yeah, we'll, so we'll play Chandra. Gaining some life is nice. And now we have five mana, so we can... If we draw... We, we're live to draw us with Conqueror's Death next turn. So we play this, gain a life. Bust it for mana. Play Oath of Chandra. Shoot this. Now they can... Like, on the board... They only have one card in hand. On the board, they can't kill our Chandra, and they also cannot kill us. So, we'll have potentially two looks at a card next turn. They plus there, hit Lan or Elves, they'll probably not cast that. They don't. So we'll see if they hit us down to three. That's probably the most likely. Okay, yep, we're going to three. So we need to hit Elspeth Conger's death or Chandra very quickly. Alright, that's a Fabled Passage. So, we... Yeah, Nahiri and Elspeth don't do it. Um, I mean, we could try and race, maybe. Like, if we play, they're at 12. We can gain 5 life. Uh, no. If we gain 5 life, we're at 8. One spell would still kill us. So I think we need to just hit either Chandra or Elspeth Conquer's death here. So we'll play this, crack it, and then plus Chandra and hope for the best. Odds are not in our favor. But this gives us a chance. 
Oh my gosh, I just did not, I just misclicked. I'm very sorry about that. That sucks. Um, well, I guess we'll just play this Nahiri now. That's so unfortunate. Well, we can see what we would have drawn, but now we're, <laughs> that sucks. If we draw one of those cards, I'll be so annoyed. Okay, so we were going to die either way. I mean, yeah, I guess, like, we can, maybe they have no spells somehow. That's our only out. So we've passed Elspeth. So, right now, yeah, we die to a spell. If we mine it, if we gain life, actually, if we gain life, we're, we survive one spell. Yeah, I actually am going to do that. And pass. Shoot them down to 10. So they do, I mean, they'll very, very likely kill us. Oh man, Winota, well. I mean, yeah, if they brick on all 20 hits, is it, wait, 6, all 24. Oh, they just have another spell. Alright, so, they got us. Good game. Uh, annoying that I misclicked there. Chandra is a concern. I think in light of that, we should bring in the fourth or the third Elspeth Conquer's death. Archer Rakaza on the play seems better to. Hmm. I guess the real question is how much we worry about Chandra versus the rest of their deck. Nahiri seems a bit weak. And Sarkon is nice because they don't have many flyers. I kind of feel like Sarkon's actually better than Chandra. Do we want to bring in another land? Go back up to 26? Maybe. Fry seems a bit dicey. It's good against just Winota pretty much, but they will have a Winota almost every game. Hmm. Okay, I think we're going to run this. Ah, I want to bring in this land, though. I'm going to bring in the land over another Tome. Um, Tome is good, but, like, we definitely don't want to draw multiples, and they're pressuring us a lot, so we don't really have the mana to, like, be drawing cards with it, and if you're just scrying four, that's not great. Okay, great hand. Very, very happy with this. Lots of removal, and we have so many Planeswalkers in our deck that We'll very likely draw into them, so this is what we want to start with. Just max removal, and then we'll find the Planeswalkers in due time. Definitely leading on a Triome, because that means we can play Chain of the Rocks next turn, and still play Temple of Triumph. Although, we'll probably just play Oath of Chandra, if they do play a Mana Elf. Are they mulling again? They've mulled every game. They mulled a 6? Okay. So, we'll play... Oh, whoops. We'll play our Triome. In case you're wondering, there's no logic that went behind choosing this Triome over the over the blue one. Um, I just thought I had cool art and hadn't played with it before. Alright, we'll play Temple of Triumph, looking for a Planeswalker. Sarkon is not the Planeswalker we want. That's the Planeswalker you want. That's like the last spell you cast. You want that when you already have a lot of Planeswalkers on play, and you can plus it to turn all your other dudes into 4-4s. Okay, Goblin Instigator, so... We can just Sweltering Suns here. I kind of think we should do that. I mean, actually, no, we'll, we'll just pass. If they go for the Eldritch Evolution line, we can just try the Winota. And if they don't have it, then this is just not that threatening, and we would rather sweep up whatever they play next turn, too. We've really drawn mono removal so far. Okay, I think that's just a better Sweltering Suns opportunity now. We will do that. I mean, yeah, I, I think it is worth doing this. It We get slightly punished if they go land, P and Kieran Alar, but setting them back on mana is nice, and also our life total is very relevant in this matchup in general. Okay, leave the war boss, that's fine. We can just change the rocks that, or actually, no, definitely Oath of Chandra that. And then they do get to keep a 1-1, but I don't care too much about that, especially with this fry. Ooh. Hmm. Well, uh, actually, wait. I was thinking, but this is not a hard choice. Well, actually, it sort of is. If we play Chandra and plus, 
play Chain of the Rocks and then chain their war boss. We don't have Fry up. So they could kill our Chandra, but I think it's still worth doing that. The upside is very like they might miss the land drop again. We could I mean we could even chain the rocks the goblin. That seems sort of bad though. Hmm. Do we want to chain the rocks a goblin? That's just so weak. But I actually think I am gonna do that, as weird as it might look. If we just get to keep on untapping with Chandra in play, that will pressure them very quickly. And this plays around the worst case scenario very well. Now they have no creature, so Winota's not a problem. And we have, like, multiple removal spells in hand still. And Chandra can also remove a, a card and a threat. Our plan is the ultimate Chandra here. Okay, another war boss is annoying, but it's not the end of the world. So they kill, they hit our Chandra, and then we'll chain the rocks this, and now we have a fry, so the goblin token is not nearly as scary. Ooh. Okay, we're just gonna... Hmm. Actually, no, we're going to plus this for cards. Um, I don't really want to play us with Conquerors. That's when we have nothing in the graveyard. Okay, that's great. We'll change the rocks, our land. Take out this and just pass it back. So hopefully they go land Winota and we can just fry it. I mean, they do have five spells in hand, so, like, it is sort of close, but as long as we can keep on protecting this Chandra, wear tear. Okay. Sure. It's a sort of weird card to be playing. I guess it makes some sense. But they can hit our Chandra for two now. So we can just play another Chain of the Rocks or else with Conqueror's Death. Uh, we're just going to plus for cards again. Although, I mean, do we want to play this in Shock? If we hit a 6-drop, we'll definitely want to, but we don't have many 6-drops, and an electrical does matter. That's a pretty tough choice, actually. I think I'm not going to. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to. Uh, we do have... Uh, no, I am going to. We have Interplanar Beacon, so we have Incidental Life Gain. Um, so we'll do it this way. All right, did not end up mattering. Um, or did end up mattering. It ended up hurting us. Chain of the Rocks, this. Take out your War Boss again. So, they're slowly working down our Chandra, but we have Elspeth Conquerors Death to bring it back when we need it. Because they play their Winota. We try their Winota. And now, I mean, now another Winota, which they are likely to have, will be good. They'll get one hit in. But, alright, that's okay. So, we will exile the top card again. Oath of Chandra, sure. Uh, actually, no. There's no... Well... Would you rather deal two extra damage to them, or get a 1-1? One, one, kill a 1-1. One, one. I think... Actually, killing a 1-1 one, one seems good. Um, if they have Winota, which we think they do, then that could be relevant. Their life total is under some pressure, because they're going to take two in their end step here, and they also have to pay life if they want white mana, but I think this seems just a bit better. Like... Yeah, we just really don't want them to go off with Winota. That's the main way to get back into this. So we shut down this and pass. They go to 10. Now they play their Winota, probably. Yep. Go to 9. And then this won't deal any damage, but whatever, whatever creature they get will probably kill our Chandra. But then we can get it back in two turns. See, it's not even. Oh, they whiff. Wow. Yeah, that is. Uh, that's really bad for our opponent. So Chandra takes no damage. I'll play land, and I mean we could minus Chandra. No, I think just plusing is good. Their life total is under enough pressure that hitting them for two is actually quite nice. So take two. We'll cast this. Kill their Winota. Yeah, they go to one here. So we'll punch them for four. They go to one in our end step from the Oh wait, no, they actually don't. We never mind. They stay at three. But still. Um this seems pretty hard for them to come back from. Nice! Alright. Two no. Good start with this deck. And it's really fun. I enjoy playing with this deck a lot, actually. Hopefully. 
Hopefully we can keep it going. Alrighty, we got our opponent. Let's see if we can win the draw. I mean, well, win the play, win the die roll, win the game. All of the above. Sweet. Punishing Waterfalls. Well then. This hand is awkward. Obviously, our spells are great. Like, we have a perfect curve. One, two, four, four. Exactly how you want it. The issue is that our mana sucks. But, I actually think I'm still going to keep. As weird as that may seem. Like, we have Interplanar Beacon. So, that can make Red White for Nahiri. And we are playing 26 lands. And, like, if they're playing a Hyper Aggro deck, and we, they can really punish us for stumbling. But against a lot of matchups, like, playing Planeswalkers on turn four is still solid. It's like opponent is mulliganing. I would not fault anyone for mulling this hand, but I think I'm going to keep it and just really hope to draw, like, any colored source in the first three draws. Alright, our opponent did mulligan once. We'll lead on Beacon. Notable that this can make two different colors, so it cannot cast Gideon, but can cast Nahiri. Well, alright. Not the start we were hoping for. Basic planes go. Oh, are we playing the mirror? That'd be crazy. <laughs> Alright, let's see a land here. Nice! So we're, we are going to shock, so we can uh, cycle Yudaro here. And then next turn we can play whichever one of these three planeswalkers we want. <laughs> Against that... Hmm, that's actually pretty close. Well, we'll definitely be cycling this here. So, like, Gideon... Oh, man, this is awkward. Maze Mind is Tone. We could... No, no. We could play Gideon and plus. If we play Gideon and zero, and they just kill our 2-2, then they can kill our Gideon. That doesn't accomplish too much. We could also play Chandra and plus to make a Maze Mind Tome. Gideon is a bit hard for us to deal with. All of our removal is sorcery speed. I think I like Chandra plus and play Maze Mind Tome. Uh, there's legitimate arguments for all three of these. I think Gideon is the... Well, if we play Gideon, we should plus. And Gideon plus is reasonable. That can threaten to kill Gideon back. Maybe that's better, but... Chandra is very mana efficient. Getting the tome down would be nice to help us start scrying. But then, like, what are we trying to scry into? I guess Sarkon would be nice, but we don't have the mana for it. But we uh, we actually do because it's Chandra Plus. Lots of arguments in lots of different directions. I think I'm going to play Gideon and Plus. Um, that just threatens their Gideon most effectively. We get super punished if they go, like, Rattle Master, hit Gideon for five, but I think that's not super likely. I think there's slight value in playing and tapping for blue there because they might think we're playing blue. So the old plus Gideon go. No attack. Now we'll see how this goes. Like, they could play a blocker, but if they play a block. Okay, there's a mute of all. That's a bit annoying. They have their own Gideon. So that's not too bad. We can play Chandra and minus to kill. Oh, they just emblem immediately. Interesting. Okay. Well, that is good. They kill that. And now they can also kill our Chandra. Oh, Elspeth Conqueror's death is a good one. So, we're just going to play Nahiri. And then, plus, and if, uh, they can animate Mutavolt to kill it, though. This is awkward. Maybe we actually just play Tome. Yeah, I think we're just going to play Tome. And draw a card immediately. Really hope they land. So we're playing against another red-white, like, mid-range deck, which is pretty funny. Uh, we'll scry. Oh, actually, we need another white source, so that was a really good draw. I think I'm going to bottom this. I'm fine drawing a land, but 
it's not like a card we actively want to draw into. We have no six drops in hand. Like, I would rather draw a six drop and then land than the other way around in this deck. Very unlike the last deck. Should I do this? That's fine. We will just Elspeth Conquer's death. Gideon Blackblade, okay. I mean, yeah, the Gideons are good against this deck, for sure. We have... That might be a flaw in the deck building, although I really don't think Gideons are good in the metagame in general. Like, I just think there's, like... I mean, I'm playing some of them, but, like, they got so much weaker when the emblem stopped being relevant for this card. Okay, so we'll change the rocks. I mean, not change the rocks. I'll put Conquer's Death. I think we would rather take out this Gideon. They both hit equally hard in this one. Like, we don't really care about them plusing this Gideon. So, I think we will scry end of turn, looking for, ideally, another Elspeth Conquer's Death, really. Okay, animate, wall. I mean, we're taking big hits here, actually. We really have very, very bad removal for Gideon's and Nine Lands. So, that might be something to consider with this deck list in general. We're dead next turn. Elspeth. Oh, that's so painfully close. That would just win the game if we could cast it, but we can't, so we have to bottom. Like, what are we looking for? I guess, I mean, really, <laughs> Elspeth, but also having played land. We can, so they're hitting for five, six, seven, eight. So this still doesn't do it. All right, we're dead. Well, that's a bummer. Um, yeah, it felt like we were not in that bad shape that game, but we just couldn't deal with our Gideons well enough. All right, that yeah, that's stupid. We losing with so many removal spells in hand that are all sorceries is rough. So we definitely, definitely want this. I think we want this too. Rabble Master also seems pretty good. I don't think Sweltering Suns is good. I mean, they could bring in stuff that Sweltering Suns is good against, but. Uh, I, and I don't particularly like Shadow of the Sky. I guess Wildering Sun is good against their, um, Gideon Ally of Zendikar. I think we're just gonna do it like this. Whoa. Cut, and then cut one Oath of Chandra. I think I'd slightly prefer cha uh, Chain of the Rocks because it just does deal with bigger things. I mean, maybe we should actually just cut... Like, a Chain of the Rocks for Sweltering Suns, because, like, it is better against Gideon, and it can cycle. I don't know their deck well enough. Also, are they going to be playing their own Rabble Masters? Maybe. Alright, I'm just going to head to the bats, go two of each. I'm not really sure between any of these removal spells. They all seem sort of equally mediocre. Oh, wait, Fry. We, we definitely want Fry. That's, like, our best card. <laughs> so, we'll cut the Oaths of Chandra for Fry's. Yeah, that seems good. We'll run this. Emrakul does not seem good. So this should be solid, actually. We have our own, like, we have White Plains Walkers that played the board, too. I mean, they just, yeah, they have a lot of Gideons, but we have good stuff against that. All right, easy, easy mulligan. Um, yeah, just mono four and fives with no lands. All right, we will keep this. We're really banking on these tomes here. So keep, bottom the six drop, of course. And we're going to fetch a mountain here because that allows for us to cast Fry, and we're already good on... Nihiri. Opponent mulligans. Having two tomes isn't really great here. Like, we probably won't, we'll probably just spend our mana drawing card instead of using it. Or instead of casting the other one. Okay. Well, that's pretty good against their planeswalkers. So, hopefully, we can scry into a land. We get three looks. Up to three looks. If we see a tap land, we will still keep it. Oh, they just conceded? What? Okay, they must have kept a one-lander. That's, uh... Yeah, they definitely scarred the bottom, right? If you scarred at the top and then concede there, you're so bad. What? Why is this game log not out? Alright, well, whatever. Um... Do we want to change anything? Probably not. I mean, we're on the draw, so being slightly more reactive would make sense, but I still think we want the Rabbles. Yeah, we're just gonna run this back. We could also cut a land, but, like, 
I don't think we want to do that. We really want to hit all our land drops. At least for a while. Well. This is a hand. Elspeth Conqueror's Death is very good against them. Hmm. I actually am going to keep... Uh, it's super... Uh, they, actually, no. We should mulligan this. Like, they have so many three-mana Gideons, and we'll take so much damage by that time. Well, what should we kept now? Can't keep a one land, though. I mean, maybe we can. If we do draw one land, we have Tome. We have two looks to draw land. And then, getting into the Trials into getting Alexander cards is a really good start. Actually, I'm going to keep this. I really don't like one-landers in general, but we're going to put back the Chandra. And then we have two looks. We have 25 lands out of 54 cards, so we have very good chance of hitting one in, in the first two draws. Um, come on, deck land! Nice, okay. So now we're going to fetch a planes end of turn, and then cast Maze Mines Tome next turn. Oh, one card this deck should maybe be playing- oh yeah, this deck should almost definitely be playing Hearth Kieran, actually. Uh, that's- yeah, that's an addition I want to make. I'm not sure what to cut, but that is a card I do want to play. Okay, that was a very, very bad draw. Maybe the worst draw on the deck. Uh, no, I guess like a, a six drop would probably be worse, but definitely bad. So, best draw would be just a, a white land of pretty much any type. Scry one. Well, I'm going to keep it. I'm not happy about it. So, we really, really don't want them to play another Gideon this turn, but they probably will. Oh man, we would have gotten majorly rewarded if we had not bought him there. Or if we had bought him the, the temple. If we could play our own Gideon here, that totally swings this, this situation a lot. Don't play another Gideon. Okay, that's worst case scenario. But we have Elspeth Conquer's Death, so we can deal with that. Make a 2-2. Two -two. Hit us for 4. So we draw a card in turn with this. Hmm, do we want to play? What do we want to play? I think I'm just going to play Gideon Ally of Zendikar. It uses the mana most efficiently, and um, they probably are a bit light on removal after game one. And then, so, and we also do want a good Planeswalker in the graveyard for Elspeth Conqueror's Death. So, we can make a 2-2, and then we still get two scries, so we get three total looks for our, hitting our fifth land. Okay, so they do have the Abrade. That is unfortunate. They can, yeah, actually, that's, that's quite bad. We'll see if they, like, attack us with the Gideon. Okay, they do attack us with the Gideon. So, they can kill our Gideon and hit us for seven. Eight, nine. Ooh, yeah, we're actually just super dead. Well, actually, we do gain four life with the tomb, so that's something. We need an untapped land at all costs. We take nine, fall to eight, then we get, go back up to twelve and kill this Gideon, and then we can kill that Gideon the turn after. Oh, another Mute of all is very bad news. Come on, untapped land. Not an untapped land. Come on, untapped land. It's a good card, but we need an untapped land. Nice. Okay. Just in the nick of time. So, we're still in bad shape. Actually, we might still just be dead. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Wait. 4, 8. We can take... They can hit us for 10 if they animate both of their Muta Vaults. And that will almost definitely kill us. We take out this. Pass it back. I guess if we drew Fry... We could play Gideon plus Fry, and that would put us in okay shape. Uh oh. So we also, oh, that's actually... Wow, that's so good. Okay, now we have a chance. Oh, wait. Oh, I forgot they had a 2-2. Two -two. Never mind. We're, still, we're dead, actually. That was a terrible, terrible play. They absolutely should have just hit us for two. Um, We can play... I guess what we do is play Gideon... And so we play Gideon and gain a life. 
Plus on their Gideon. We're at seven, so they can't kill us. We can cycle Yudara. Next turn, we can play Nahiri and minus to get rid of their of this thing. Although, actually, it doesn't even do anything, so we don't need to do that. Um, yeah, I think whatever we're doing, it starts with playing Gideon this turn, right? Because, I mean, yeah, otherwise we're just dead. If we just pass, then they can kill us with this knight and our two meat vaults. Oh, mm, slight, slight misplay here, actually. Yeah, at this point it doesn't matter. But we should have, um, we should have cycled Yudara first in case we could draw another interplanet beacon because two life could be very relevant here. So plus on that, pass it back. And I'm going to fetch first because I don't want to draw a land. So they will probably just hit our Gideon for... Oh, they tapped a Muta Vault there? Okay, our opponent is playing quite poorly. If they're just animating Muta Vaults every turn, we are super dead. Luckily, they're not doing that. So they send two things at Gideon. I guess actually another misplay. I should have uh, cycled... I definitely should have just cycled Dara before doing anything there, because we also could have drawn Chain of the Rocks. Oops. So we'll crack this for planes. Cycle this. Needle spires is not great, but it does something. Else, ooh, fry. Well. Unfortunately, Elspeth Conquer's death is going to be good here. Um, hmm. So, we can... If we cast Nahiri in minus on their knight, we just die. We go up to eight, but then we take eight. So we have to fry this, which means we can't use our mana efficiently. Frustratingly. I really, really wish that this cost four instead of six. If we could play this minus here and then fry this, we might actually be winning. But that is not the case, so... Do that. Pass. Hopefully they play around Settle the Wreckage. We could just be playing Birth of Melitus. It's possible we should be doing that. Alright, so we fry this. Now, I mean, they have been not attacking the Vault that much. Maybe they won't attack us again. But they almost definitely will. So yeah, they hit us with both Muta Vaults. We go to one. Are we just dead then? I think so. Oh no, we could draw Big Elspeth. That's our out. So let's draw Big Elspeth this turn. We could also Nahiri plus into Gideon. Little Gideon. Oh, they have another Gideon. Okay, that's bad. That probably means we're just dead. So we could play Chandra. Plus play Elspeth Conquer's Death. We still die, but I'm just going to do that because it makes it look closer. Yeah, we were close. We were definitely close this game. I wonder if we had bought him this uh, Temple of Triumph if we would have won. I kind of think we would have. But yeah, they just animate some Muta Vaults and kill us here, unfortunately. All right, well played opponent. So that's tough. We lost the mirror. I, yeah, yeah. If we had, mm, yeah, I don't know. I kind of think that matchup. I think our deck is better overall. Gideon's are just so bad. Well, I don't know. Like that deck. I think our deck has a chance against a blue eye control deck, and their deck just has absolutely no chance. All of their cards die to. Azorius Charm, they have no card draw, um, but they are, our deck is weak to Gideon's, like, we just don't have that many ways to deal with creatures that are not creatures on our turn, so, like, maybe we should be playing some Seal Aways or something like that, or Field of Ruin if we're worried about Muta Vault, 
If those arches were field of ruins, actually, maybe we win that game. We probably do. Yeah, on the turn where we fr had fry, we had two arches, I think. Uh, maybe only one arch. But if we had a, a mutable, or if we had a field for the mutable, I think we do win that game. So that's a. Uh, maybe we should just be playing fields. Like so far, card draw has not been a problem with this deck. So keep. When it has mulligans. Zen is slow. We have Chained to the Rocks for early creatures, um, and we need to draw some lands for all these expensive things. And or else, we will certainly be chaining that. Another Chained to the Rocks, that's a good draw. Are you the channel fireball guy? <laughs> okay, Becca, Fabled Passage, we'll see what they get. Black, green, okay. So we're hoping to draw some lands just to play all our. Four and fives. They are trying a pioneer experimentation. So are we, friend. Is there any incentive to cracking a Fable Passage now? No, we can play um, a Gideon next turn either way. Thoughtseize, okay. My guess is they take the Chandra here, although I could imagine Elspeth Cogger's death as well. Actually, I could sort of imagine them taking any of these, but if I had to put my money on one, I'd say Chandra. Okay, yeah. No land. We draw an arch. I will play a beacon. So, right now. The change I would make is go down to probably one arch and play a couple fields. Ooh, that was a great, great draw. I'm going to play this to conceal information. Fetch a planes. Also, at this point, we sort of want to stop drawing lands. Like, more lands would be fine, but not great. Cast Chandra. Minus. It's always so frustrating when you thought sees a card and then your opponent just draws another one. Like, if they knew we had Chandra, we would, they would definitely not just jam their tracker there. Although, I think they did know we had a chain to the rocks, but that's a much less bad trade for them. There's a Courser. Okay. Bring the dust on top. Don't care too much about that. So, we can slot Chandra for mana to play Sarkon plus chain to the rocks. I think that seems like what we want to do. Yeah, I think we're, we're in a pretty commanding position at this point. They're drawing Cling to Dust, so that's just a cantrip. Make a dragon. Chain uh, Basic Mountain. In general, it is better to chain uh, Basics when you can because of Field of Ruin and stuff like that. But, like, I, I want it all. And turn 1 is just more important just to cut them off of mana. If they play turn 2 Tracker, this could be a very different game, potentially. Although, actually, they couldn't have done that because our other land was a Fabled Passage, but um, still just good practice. Oh, we have City's Blessing now. That's cool. Next turn, we can hit for 12 in the air. Okay, cling to Dust or Chandra, sure. So, the third chapter of Elspeth Conger's death is going to be pretty hard to get value out of. Okay, we're going to play land and plus Chandra. And if we brick, we are going to draw a card with Arch, so we'll see that actually being good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, actually, we'll just, might as well just do that, end of their turn. So, plus this, hit for 12. Sarkon. 
deals a lot of damage very quickly. I tried playing this deck, but I was playing with the Gideon Trials. So hit them for 12, and then we'll draw a card into their turn. And I mean, yeah, it's pretty over. Like, they have four mana. I can't really think of anything they could play from this position. I mean, yeah, there's nothing that destroys all creatures and planeswalkers that I can think of. I mean, oh, Fable Push? The, okay, that's fine. Fable Push the Dragon. They're still dead to these Planeswalkers next turn. Actually, well, if they can kill the Sarkon, then actually... I mean, we're still ahead because we have a Chandra and an Arch going, and Elspeth Conquer's death, but... Okay, they can do concede. But if they'd killed this, then they would at least have a couple more turns. Alright, so like black green mid range. If they're playing Cling to Dust, Elspeth looks worse. And my guess is that like these are gonna be better. Do we want Deafening Clarion? I don't think we want to go that deep. Elspeth Conquer's Death is a nice removal spell, but the back end does get sort of rocked by Cling to Dust. Rest in peace is an option, but I, I think all these cards are just a bit better, so I kind of like just running this back. I mean, we could play the other Chandra if we think it's going to be like a pretty grindy matchup. But I don't think that does too much. I think I'm just going to run this. The meantime, when you want the other Chandra is for decks that have counter spells. Well... This hand has a lot of land. Yeah, I should probably shift this. Okay, we'll definitely keep this. Um, I'm going to put back a Yudaro. And, well, yeah, maybe we actually put back Sarkon. Yeah, I think we're going to put back Sarkon. We, it's awkward that we can't play Field uh, Chain of the Rock right now, because if we fetch a Mountain or a Plains, we don't have the other one, and Chain of the Rocks requires both. So, best draw would be Sacred Foundry. Hmm. Do we play Fable Badger? I think we are. We're just going to fetch a mountain. Um, yeah, like, if we draw a mountain, we'll wish we had fetched a plains. But that lets us get Yudaro. And also, we have, like, non-mountain white sources that um, we could use cast chains, whereas you need specifically mountain to do, um, to, like, put this on. Also, Mountain is better in case we draw Sweltering Suns, which is one of our best draws here. I still have to draw Planes. Alright, we'll just play a Tome and scry towards... Well, our mana is awkward. We really don't have good mana for anything other than Planeswalkers. And we don't even really have good mana for Planes... Like, we can't play Gideon with this, because of the way Interplanar Beacon works. You can't use the mana, the non-white mana from one beacon to activate the other one. Alright, well, we'll scry, looking for the board sweeper, ideally. Don't want to change the rocks here, unfortunately. I wish we could cast it. Chandra, okay. I think I'm just going to draw a card main phase. We could also cycle your, your uh, Yudaro, but I think I'm going to do this now and hope to hit, okay, another, another awkward land, so... The mana base has been dicey. I'm not convinced this is the best build for the mana base. Although next turn we can play Chandra or Nahiri, so that's something. They have a lot of mana, but they're not doing anything, which is definitely okay with me. So this turn we can play Chandra, and not like this. <laughs> we can play Chandra plus Chandra, gain two life, which 
that undoes like a whole turn of their attacks. And then we play this, and then we're just gonna plus and draw a card with the tome. Add two mana. Again, I'm drawing cards with a tome instead of cycling because, um, like these are, these are like putting us up a card, and we don't really need to scry. Like if we were really trying to get a specific card, we would definitely cycle Yudaro and then scry. Um, but that's just not the case. Like we just want card quantity at this point, especially against a deck playing stuff like Thoughtseize. So they may have a way to deal with the Chandra, but we don't really care. Do they attack our Chandra? They do. They just pass. Wow, okay, yeah. I, I don't really know what our opponent's doing over there. Um, I think we're just going to play Arch and then play Sarkon plus Omen of Chandra or Oath of Chandra. So, five mana Sarkon. Make a dragon. And then we can start hitting with a lot of Planeswalkers very soon. So we'll shoot one of these. They take two from the Omen, or from the Oath, end of turn. And then we can scry if we want end of turn, but I don't think I care about that. I think we're just going to keep the Tome around to draw another card. So I think without the Arch, or without the Tome, Arch of, us, of whatever would be good, but... Since we don't have that, look, okay, Fatal Push there, sure. They still can't kill either of these with their board. Um, these are probably not necessary, or at least multiples are not necessary if we have a Tome. So, we could either add just more colored mana sources or Field of Ruin. Uh-oh. Oh, okay, that's, I mean, that's decent. It can make them kill our Sarkon. Yeah, I mean, it's okay. But we can also just play Daro and hit for 8. Yeah, next turn we can uh, play, add two mana and shock and play Yudaro plus Chain to the Rocks to kill both of these threats. So they kill our Sarkon, sure. Uh, we do need to play Sacred Foundry so we get white mana. So we will add two mana. Cast Yudaro. So far, the Yudaro and Nahiri thing has not really been relevant. Um, so it's possible we should just cut that, but it hasn't been bad. Worth noting, you want you would definitely want to remove your opponent's thing post combat if it was fatal pushable. Like if this was a four drop, that would be very awkward. We just enabled their fatal push, but Yudaro doesn't care about that. Play another land. Okay, they're, yeah, they're not in very good shape here. GG, Drew and Rebidian. That's, frust that's frustrating. So, I mean, I'll just start by drawing a card and gaining four life. <laughs> so we draw a card and then play our beacon, gain three life when we play Nahiri. Wait, three, four, five, six, seven. So we can't quite play both, but we all are still going to add mana so we can do more things. So we'll make red white with this. Cast. Uh. Okay, well, this is what, yeah, we'll, we'll add white, black, and then, wait, what am I trying to cast here? Okay, sorry. <laughs> so, add white, no, no, add another white, cast Gideon. 
Gain five or three life. Make a tutu. And then tap these two for another tome. And hit them for eight. And still have a backup planeswalker just in case. And the card draw engine. And they hit eight, take two. And we have two arches. So <laughs> I'm feeling pretty good about our position in this one. Uh, yeah, I think we got this one wrapped up. But we'll see if we can keep it going for round five. I'm not going to scry here because I'd rather just draw cards. They do get their coarser value, but I don't think that'll beat our Yudaro value. Daro actually was pretty good here, and it also play, so it plays well with Nahiri, also plays quite well with Chandra, because you can just plus it and then play that on turn 5 with no other assistance. So we can minus here, plus here, cast uh, Nahiri for funsies, and for the life gain, and then crash on in for lethal. All right, so three and one. All right, time for round five. Let's see if we can secure that four one. So far, I mean, we haven't played a whole lot of like what I would call tier decks, although who even knows what tier decks are? I mean, I guess by that I just mean like burn or mono black aggro or blue control decks. I would love to play against a blue control deck. I'm not sure if it would be a good matchup or not, but I do think those are an important thing to have a good matchup against, so it would just be nice for testing purposes. Okay, this hand is good, although it is pretty awkward not to have double white, but um, I still think it's a keep. Having Chain of the Rocks is really important in a lot of matchups. Okay, this is looking like it's going to be a good Chain of the Rocks matchup. Ooh, never mind. Okay, this could be ugly. This could be very, very ugly. If they're playing Ugin, we basically just fold the Ugin. In fact, maybe I should um build my deck a bit more with that in mind and have some like needles or something in the board. Another option would be to play a Karn the Great Creator package. Okay, Land or Elves, we uh will probably just change the rocks that. Ooh, perfect draw. So chain of the rocks. Get rid of your elf. And the next turn we can play Gideon, and then after that, one of these two four drops. So what are we trying to scry into? I don't really know. Elspeth Conqueror's Death is good. Yeah, that is something I will scry into. That's a way to fight against their big things. Oh man, if they just play World Breaker, Exile our Sacred Foundry, blow us out. Yeah, this, uh, I don't think we have a great matchup against Ugin Ramp. What is this? What? That sucks. Whenever this wait, when it enters the battlefield, you put a land into play. Whenever it mutates, you destroy an artifact or enchantment. Okay, and now we're just taking four. Well, I mean, we can plus our getting on that, but it is knowing that they got their land or else back for three. So we will plus this on that. I guess we actually do have a reasonable clock. If we go 4-drop into Sarkon, we hit them for 8 in the air that turn, and then 12 in the air the turn after. So, if we hit another land, we have a, a pretty nice clock. But they could also just play, like, a Nissa here or something and crush us. Don't be Nissa, please. Okay, 6 mana. Well, I mean, that's bad if they have a 6 mana creature. <laughs> what do we want this to be? I guess that dude that doubles his power. Oh, Oblivion Sower. Did they hit some lands? One Interplanar Beacon. Okay, I can live with that. But we are probably going to lose still. So if we play... We could play Nahiri and eat one of these things, but then one of our Planeswalkers dies. We could play Nahiri and plus, or we could just play Elspeth and make some 1-1s. One Does so this have any keywords like trample or anything? It does have reach and trample. Okay. Um... Yeah, we're going to play Elspeth and make some 1-1s, one and then plus on their, on this thing, I think. So I, I like the idea of just getting rid of this, the bigger creature for good. Oh, wait, no, this thing has trample. Never mind. So we will plus on 
the sour. I mean, the, the not sour, the gem razor. It's nice that we drew a land, so we have Elspeth Conqueror's Death up next turn if we want to. So we will do this, and then plus here. And then pass in. So now next turn we can play Sarkon. And exile the Obli or uh, we can play, sorry, we can probably play Nahiri. Exile the Oblivion Sower. Make more 1-1s, one and then the turn after we play Sarkon and hit for 12 immediately. Uh-oh, don't play it. So they could play 8-drop Eldrazi. They could just play another Oblivion Sower. What does this thing do? Wait. Mutate? Wait, exile the top X permanent cards. X the number of times this creature has been mutated, which is once. Okay, that's not... I mean, that wasn't that bad. Well, we got lucky also that they hit Lionel Elves. And now it's a 6-6, it's six, six, which is, I mean, big, but it's not too bad. So we can, we'll chump block both of these. So this can block that way, yeah. So I think what we're going to do is play Nahiri minus to exile this. And then plus on this again, make more 1-1s. One so we'll cast this, cast Nahiri. And we're fighting. They're playing big creatures, but we're fighting them. They only have one card. So if they have another land or something, we actually could potentially still win this. But they could also just play in, like a Ulamog and absolutely rock us. So get rid of get rid of that dude. Make some more blockers. Plus on this dude. And Table Passage at least gives us potentially some fodder for flashing back this Elspeth. So that's cool. Next turn, we we give our choice between... I mean, we can plus Nahiri to keep her around, or just minus again to kill the Oblivion Sower, most likely. Okay, Gem Razor. On that, so they get a 4-4 with Trample. That's a bit annoying, because they can kill one of our Planeswalkers now. We'll see. I guess they'll probably just kill the Nahiri. Don't have any artifacts or enchantments, luckily. So they do kill the Nahiri, and then they go at Gideon, and we'll just chump lock to keep the Gideon. I mean, the Gideon would survive either way, but I think 5 loyalty is worth more than 1-1. One, one. This all happens, then in a turn we'll crack this for planes. Don't want to draw planes. We have three cards in our graveyard, so moving towards being able to get back something. Um, now, I think we are just going to Elspeth Conquer's Death and exile one of these 4-4s. Four Does it matter? I don't think so. So, cast this. You can get back Nahiri in two turns. So get that and plus on this. We'll be chump blocking again. And now, yeah, we, we don't want to minus the, the Elspeth here. We want to be able to have it to attack for four next turn potentially. Don't have something big. Okay, a Boreal Grazer. I'm alright with that. This is much better than if they were playing the deck we played last yesterday. Um, although the fact that they didn't play land, they could have a huge card in their hand. They have four, five, six mana. Actually, they don't have a ton of mana. But um, we do we want to kill them quickly if possible. Ooh, okay, that is good. So, we're actually just going to play that now. Do we want to play the land or hold it for Nihiri discard? I guess we'll hold it. We don't really need more lands ever, I think. So, cast Chandra. Gain two life. Make sure we get back Nihiri. Shoot this. I just want to make sure it is a 4-4. Four -four. Yep. Kill your gem raiser. Plus this on your Oblivion Tower. And then pass. 
And now next turn, we'll finally play our Sarkon. Been a long time coming. Get back on Ahiri and hit them for 12 in the air, most likely. We could also make a dragon, but I think hitting them for 12 is better. No play. So they probably have two, like, eight drops in hand. Sweltering Suns is bad. So we'll put a loyalty counter on that. We'll start by plussing this. Pitch this mountain. Oath of Chandra. Oh, wow. So we actually do want... <laughs> we do want mana now. So I think we're going to plus this Chandra for mana. Oath of Chandra actually is nice because this thing has reach. So pay five for Sarkon. Gain two more life. Not that that's too relevant. And then play Oath of Chandra. Kill this. We can still plus our Gideon. Gideon here, and plus this, and attack with everything, and they'll go to six. Oh, wait, yeah, yeah, six. We have 20 power in the air, so that's cool. <laughs> so now, I mean, they can't play Ulamog this turn. I guess if they went, like, Shrine of the Forgotten Gods into Ulamog, or into Ugin, and minus to kill all our stuff, then that would be pretty devastating, and we would probably just lose. But we can beat any creature here, I think. Okay, Forest, they can't play Ugin. I mean, if they kill our Sarkon... All right, sweet. So I think this should be a pretty tough matchup overall, but we managed to get there in that one. So against their Gem Razors, Chain of the Rocks, and Maze Mind Tome are both slight liabilities. I definitely think we want Elspeth Conquer's Death. They have a lot of creatures. Hmm. Elspeth Sun's Champion seems quite good against them. I still don't know their like real top end. We, they definitely have bigger stuff than they got to there. Sweltering Suns cleans up their elves, but is not great against most of their stuff. I think Oath of Chandra is better than Sweltering Suns. Also, the... Two, the Damage can add up. Shadow of the Sky is probably good. It'll like always draw them a card, but I think it probably is still worth it. So maybe we bring in the Shadow of the Skies and cut three Sweltering Suns. And then Goblin Rabble Master could maybe be okay in the like Goblin Rabble Master would be great against the Unexpected Results deck. But this deck has a lot of like mid-range creatures that can brick it pretty easily. Would we rather have a Chandra Awakened Inferno than the last Sweltering Suns? Probably not on the draw. We should mulligan this, I think. Like, we can survive for a while, but we have no ways to actually kill their creatures. And we're light on lands, and we have no removal for their elves. Yeah, I think we can do better than this. Okay, I'll keep this hand. We need a planes. I'm going to put back an arch. And, yeah, if we hit one planes, this hand becomes pretty good. Because unfortunately, I mean, we have two Interplanar Beacons, so we can play a turn four Gideon at least. But we can't play Chain of the Rocks anytime soon. And also, it would be nice to be able to play Gideon on turn three instead. We have a, a good start there. Another mountain is certainly not what we wanted. So we have Oath of Chandra to deal with some things here. Another Grazer. Okay, well, I mean, if they put a land into play, they only have two cards left in their hand. What does this land do? Oh, draw a card if you... Oh, interesting. So I saw... Like, this is another direction we could take. We could try and play that, and then play stuff like Rekindling Phoenix and Bone Crusher Giant and um, Ox of Agonis. That's, like, another card draw engine, but I think, like, Fortune Bridge with a bunch of Planeswalkers is a more powerful place to start. All right, what's your four drop? Questing Beast? Okay. Oh, really awkward that damage can't be prevented by that. So we cannot get any of the trials this, right? Combat damage cannot be prevented. Yeah. So can't get any of that. That's a good thing to know. I, I can imagine someone 
thinking they could and then getting rocked. I mean, against a bad opponent, it's possible it would still work because they just like wouldn't know and they wouldn't attack. But if they know how the card works, then they could get you pretty good there. Oof. Okay. Pretty rough to draw these mountains. Also, it would be pretty rough if they have a gem razor. But taking them off of a four power creature is good for for this. But decks that are playing this tend to match up pretty well against Oath of Chandra and Sweltering Sun, so that's a bit unfortunate. And Shadow Sky. We'll just pass. So they have three spells in hand. Ooh, I think we would rather get Nahiri down than Gideon. Getting a, a Yadaro out would be pretty nice. Plus we have some, some bricks in hand that we want to get rid of. And use an animal efficiently next turn we can play Gideon plus Oath. Pitch one of these. Another Interplanar Beacon. Okay. I kind of don't think we're just gonna like instant minus eight in a hero next turn. Unfortunately, like if we had a better target, we could. Okay, they have a five drop, a six drop. Probably a mutate. That thing that mutates one. Oh. Yeah, so they get one permanent. Please be our Arboreal Razor. Okay, Forest. This thing is a 6-6. Six, six. Oh, man. Okay, that sucks. So we lose our Nahiri. That's bad. But at least we got to filter through one brick. Sarkon, interesting. We could play Sarkon, but that seems bad. So I think we're going to play Gideon plus here. And then we're just going to Oath of Chandra this thing. Um, it's not the most impressive Oath ever, but, um, it does prevent, like, or weaken their future mutates. So, we will do that, that, cast this, and then, with a Sark on hand, we can start beating down fairly quickly. So, if they, like, depending on their hand, we could potentially kill them before they can get up to anything super scary. Also, the Earth will shoot them for two. So next turn, we can play Sarkon, make a 4-4, and hit them for 4, and they'll also take 2 from this. So they would go to 18, then 14, then 12. And then, oh, so actually we kill them in 2 turns. Um, Yeah, we kill them in 2 turns, if they can't do anything. Although, does this have reach or something? Yeah, dang it. So never mind. Okay, they hit another land, so they have 7 mana. And they, we know they're both spells in hand. They can also draw a card if they want to. Okay, that's not as bad as it could have been. Uh, actually, it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. So, our Gideon gets hit. Yeah, Gideon is going to die now. So, hopefully we draw Elspeth Conqueror. Oh, we can't even cast Elspeth Conqueror's death. That sucks. Okay, we're, we're pretty dead here. Okay, they draw a card, sure. Arboreal Grazer, that's good. But this missile will kill us very quickly if we don't find a way to deal with it, for sure. Nahiri, we can kill their land. Is that better than just... Playing Sarkon and making a 4-4. I think I would rather make a 4-4. So we can play Sarkon. Make a 4-4. And then it's sort of... like I want to be able to Nahiri minus on this. But I also want to get in plus on this. Why, I wish this was just tapped. Hmm... I think, like, a 4-4 holds off their 3-3s three from Nissa quite well. So I think we are going to do that. And then do we want to play this mountain? I think we... I think we don't. I mean, there's no world where we have, like, both a land and a 7-drop in our hand next turn. So, yeah, I think we're going to hold this and just cast Sarkon, make a 4-4. We 
you get to use them for two again, but we're still quite behind. I think their last card is very good. Oh, wait, no. Their last card, yeah, I think their last card is, oh, wait, no. So it is just a blind draw, actually, but they their top decks are very good because they have infinite mana, and they can draw two cards per turn. No, actually, I am going to plus on their 3-3. Three, three. Well, uh, I want to get rid of this so badly. But they don't even have to attack if they're worried about us having it here. But they probably would. Mm -hmm. Like, getting rid of this would mean that they can't draw extra cards with that. But plus, you know, this doesn't really do anything. They already can't attack with it. Is very close. So there's a 6-6 six, six with Reach. There's nothing in our deck that would kill it, except for Chandra. Oh, ooh, drawing Elspeth Sun's Champion would be nice. I, uh, this is really close. I think I'm just going to plus on this. It, get, it gives them fewer options. They, like, they know we have 12 power coming at them, so... Like... If they, they could just leave it back to block anyways, in which case, yeah, we're just giving them another option. But I think we are in pretty rough shape here. If they animate another forest and attack, they can kill either one of our planeswalkers. Okay, that will end the game, definitely. So minus five. Oh, wait, well, if they kill our, no, they'll probably minus three. Oh, yeah, they also get like the questing beast. Yeah, that definitely ends the game. Hopefully they minus five. That's our main hope. Get rid of their own things and their own Nissa. Minus two. Interesting. Yeah, I mean that's fair. I they should have. I still feel like they probably should have just killed this Gideon. But yeah, we're we're dead now. So yeah, that's why this matchup is bad. Ugin just destroys us so hard. Um, if Ugin's a big part of the meta game, we need four needles in the sideboard or something like that. I kind of do want to bring in Rabble Masters and just try and be faster and, like, kill them quickly. We're not a fast deck, but, like, they win the late game. I think that's a bad strategy to try and go towards the late game. Yeah, we're just going to do this and try and kill them faster. All right. Hopefully this plan works. Okay, we'll keep this. It is annoying that it has so many tap lands. I think we're going to lead on Spires. Because we might want to cycle this and we want to save our scribe for when we have more information. This is bad if we... Oh no, it's still not bad. If, if we need to change the rock... If we draw a chain of the rocks and we need to do it, we can just play Triome and then tap this to use it. So it is an elf, so hopefully... I mean, chain of the rocks would be a great draw now. Okay, I'm just going to play this now because, well, no, I'll, I'll play this. We'll play this. Because we still might cycle this. Chandra, okay. I think we do keep that. And pass, and we'll see what they do here in, in terms of whether we want to play Rabble Master or Gideon. If we can get a hidden with Rabble Master without it, Doing it like without it dying, we'll do that. I think. Okay, cultivate. Yeah, I think we want to play Rabble Master and just start getting bodies into play. And then if they play something, we can block the Rabble Master profitably. We can just play Gideon and plus on it. But our opponent does have five mana now, so like we could easily just die to Nissa soon. Well, I guess if they play Nissa, we can kill it if we draw an untapped land. Yeah, like, this, go this Goblin Rabble Master could have been a board sweeper that would kill this elf, but, like, that's just delaying the game, and that favors the Ugin deck every time. They can play a 6-drop now. Custom Beast, okay. We can kill that with Chandra if we draw a land. 
Come on, land. Land. Ooh, that's good too. So we'll chain. Oh, wait, yeah. So play this first. Chain this. I mean, they might be able to kill us and get it back, but at least we get in one good hit here. And they also might not be able to get it back. Take out your questing beast. This is a situation where, like, we would much, much rather this Maze Mind's Tome be a Heart of Kiran. So hit for six. Now, best case scenario, they just play another Questing Beast or something like that. And we can Chandra it down. So we can Scry now. We don't really know what we're looking for yet. I mean, we want ways to get in damage, really. Needle Spires could actually be quite good here. So there's two real directions you could go with this deck. One is like a little bit more of a card advantage long game engine, and then another is like more things that end the game quickly. And these lands are sort of a good symbol of that. Like you could play four Needle Spires and four Heart of Quran, or you could play four Temple of Triumph and four Maze Mind's Tome. Does this kill our artifact enchantment? Yeah, it does. That's a bummer. So we're definitely going to lose now. Like they get to get back their Questing Beast and hit us for eight. I mean, actually, no. We can Chandra down one of them. Yeah, if they attack us for 8, we can hit them back for a lot. So we really want them to attack with both. Oh, wait. They don't have 6. Okay, they did not attack with both, unfortunately. We are going to scribe. We don't even really know what we want, but we're, just, we're not. This game will not get to the point where we're drawing a million cards with this. Elspeth conquers that. That's interesting. We should probably top that, even though we can't play it now. So we'll cast this. And I would rather kill the Questing Beast than this thing. So we'll shoot that, and then attack all out. And they can they can trade with the Goblin Rabble Master if they want to. But we're still getting in for three, and we have some dudes. And then they also can't kill our Chandra. And if they just eat one of these things, then they're taking a big hit from the Rabble Master. They would take seven, go down to six. They do trade with the Rabble Master, so we'll almost definitely get to untap with Chandra. I mean, they could have another Questing Beast, but I guess this deck, it's nice for them to not have anything to mutate onto, for sure. That makes Arboreal Grazer a lot better in this deck when they have stuff like that. They don't care too much about that. We just don't want to see Questing Beast. Five mana? Okay, that's also quite bad. So we really, really want to see a land here. And luckily we do get three looks with a, with a Tome. So Chandra dies, and we don't really have good attacks with our 1-1s one anymore. Yeah, I mean, now we're just not... Like, our pressure is basically gone, and they still have a fairly high life total, and... It just seems very hard for us to come back from this position. Okay, we will keep keep this. Shock. Play else with conquers that. And pass. And now, like, there's some cards in hand that they could we could beat here. They do have a lot of mana. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven mana for creatures. So we're probably dead, but like maybe they're flooded, or maybe they're... Yeah, I mean, if they have like one land and three spells, it seems very, very hard for us to win. Uh-oh. Yeah, that's, uh, that's very, 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 very bad. I don't think we can win anymore. I guess we could find another Elspeth Conjures Bath. So we'll just put three goblins in front of one of these. And actually, yeah, if we find an Elspeth Conjures Death, we're in maybe okay shape. And we have three looks again. We have two hits in our deck. So not great. But there's a chance.
I think we're bottoming everything other than Elspeth Conquer's death. Big hit. Yuri, not going to do it. Come on. Uh, so, yeah, now we just die. I mean, like, we're not going to concede yet, but I, I would say our chance of winning at this point is, like, 5%, maybe. Uh, that's almost definitely generous, actually. Definitely lower than that. Like, they just have infinite mana now, so they can play. There's a very high chance they'll just play Egan this turn. I mean, if they have all bricks in hand somehow, on board, like, they can't kill our Gideon. And then we get back a Chandra. But yeah, they just have too much mana. Six. I mean, Creature is better than Ugin, I guess. They mutate something onto this forest. Oh, Oblivion Sower? Okay. That's not too bad. We got two of our lands, although I'm very happy not to draw either of those cards. So what's our path to victory if there is one? I can't really think of one. Like, I mean, if we actually drew an Oath of Chandra and then play Chandra, that hits them for six. That maybe does something. I guess we don't have any sweltering suns, right? Yeah, so. But that wouldn't even work. I was thinking we could like plus here and then somehow get to a Chandra ultimate because it comes in with five, but that's not feasible. Cultivate? Okay. I mean, I'm happy they have more land stuff, I guess, but this is just a fundamental mismatch. Like, I don't think you can really build the deck in a way that beats this unless you make it much, much more aggressive, which maybe would be good. I'll go through some changes that I'll make after this. Again, this is my first league ever with this deck, so um, definitely a couple places where I think we could improve it. What does this do again? Whenever it mutates, you get a land. Sure. Cool deck opponent. Well, no, um, no upkeep effects here. All right, get back, Chandra. I mean, they're out of cards. Is this a four, four, three, four? I think we just have to hit Elspeth Conquer's death. Oh, we have to, yeah, we crack this first. Grab a mountain, and let's see what we got. Yadara. We can actually cast that. <laughs> Wait, maybe that gives us a chance? Although, I mean, they could just double block this, and we just kill the Oblivion Sower. Okay, I'm going to plus... On this, and attack their Nyssa. Uh, no, we should probably just attack them. Are we dead on the backswing? 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, we are dead on the backswing, so we're just banking on them playing poorly. We're definitely not going to win by playing Yudaro and leaving it back. We found the line. Dang it. Alright, so they get us. Um... Yeah, if this was an Emrakul, well, yeah, we wouldn't have had enough mana there. They play their lands and kill us. Wait, yeah. Okay, so 3-2, and two, not the best results, but it felt like a good deck. Um, though, first match we lost, I definitely think we should have won. And, like, I'm not too worried about that. I think that deck is pretty weak, but <laughs> even though it's very similar to this one. This is a tough matchup. So if, if like, green ramp is a big part of the metagame, I think you can't really play this deck. Like... If you're going to play a super frenzy deck, you just have to either be fast or have a lot of counter magic. Alright everyone, so we just went 3-2. and two. Decent result, but not great. Um, 
And there's a couple changes to make. So, first of all, part of Kuron would be an all-star in this deck. We don't have a ton of three mana planeswalkers. I think we'll actually want to add a Gideon for this. Maze Mind Tome was nice, but I think that's not the best angle for us to be taking. So I think I would like the idea of cutting a Shadow of the Sky, bringing in two Hearts of Kuron, cutting one of these, um, maybe going down to one of, uh, to only one actually, and bring in a Field of Ruin. I think we can go down to 25 lands, probably, because we're going to be lowering the curve a bit. Um, maybe cutting one Elspeth. It seems okay, but I like the idea of having another Gideon. And Nahiri for Yudaro becomes better when we're trying to take a slightly more aggressive approach. So, we'll add another Gideon to the Trials. And then, let's see, we still have room for one more card in the main deck. Another option would be play the, play the three mana Chandra. It is nice with all these red planeswalkers that you can give loyalty to, but I think that's not quite worth it just because um, we don't have any instants or sorceries to flash back to speak of. Um, so I think we will add... Uh, so we can add one more card. I think we want another Oath of Chandra. That seems like, If we're trying to be a little bit aggressive, that seems like a really, really good card for us. So four Oaths, four Chain of the Rocks, and then... This build, does that seem good? Or maybe, actually no, we probably should still have enough lands. Do I have a mutable? Yeah, okay. I think we'll go one mutable, one field, one arch. Um, still not sure exactly what's best. And then I think I would rather have more Needle Spires than Temple of Triumphs. Since we're hoping to be able to like close out the game with, with an attack like that. So bring in a couple of needle splash to go up to three. And then in terms of the sideboard, we have two real options. We can either go under Ugin or play Pithing Needles. I kind of think we Well, first of all, I don't think Emmercool is really necessary. Um yeah, I, I don't think that's super good. And then I think a couple needles is probably solid. I guess Sorcerer Spyglass is probably better. Is that even good though? I'm not sure it is good. I kind of think we just go under Ugin and then win with Mad Labs afterwards. Hmm. So thinking about the matchups that we lost, we lost to White Planeswalkers. Uh, I think another Fry would be good, actually. Um, that's It is like Gideons are good against this deck, and I do think we didn't play any there, but there will be a lot of Teferi decks where Fry is quite a nice card. So I think this is the build I would do if I were to play another league with this deck. Um... But it played well. I, I liked it a lot. It had like a solid control plan, and it could also finish the game pretty quickly with stuff like Sarkon. And I think adding a couple Heart of Kuran will both protect Planeswalkers very well and make you be able to end the game quickly, too. So, uh, pretty excited about this deck. I think it's a lot of fun, and it is pretty competitive. Um, I still think it's not as strong as Blue Eye Control, but it is a good good deck in the metagame, I think. And with a, couple, a little bit more tuning, I'm sure this could become um, a solid trophy getter. So thank you for watching. Let me know in the comments if there's any cards you think I should be playing or um, stuff like that. I mean, we could be playing either Karn if we went for a little bit more of a, a long game approach. Um, yeah, I don't know. There's a lot of different directions you can take this. But definitely let me know in the comments. And thank you for watching. And uh, if you haven't already, I would love it if you would like and subscribe. That definitely helps my channel out a lot. And um, I'm just like a dude with a full-time job trying to make these on the side. So any encouragement I can get that makes me want to keep doing it is, is really great. So thanks for watching, everyone. See you next time.